My background, I should have joined the last session. My background is AI and, and, and computer science. Um, I was a member of a Yale AI project in 1985. I got my PhD in AI in 1993. But the AI has three directions. One is what we talk about, AI, how usable it is for humans. That's technology. Two, like the AI like AI life, we just saw the beautiful video. Third, there's another area of AI that I've been working that's more basic. Where does our cognition come from? Where consciousness come from? That's more of a, of a mind thing. So it's different from deep learning and algorithms, basically basic science of research. First, early 1990s, I was working at the Harvard Medical School was using a first functional MRI to, to see what was going on. That, that's still going on. So my research is very basic. However, mathematics, discrete mathematics is my area. So I would try to talk to you without any mathematical formula, but please understand it's basically a, a mathematical things that I'm talking about. So very short. The uh, introduction of how it is late, my research is the blockchain. I have a several projects going on. One is uh, the SciLab is a Carnegie Mellon University. That's, I've been there forever. I still am uh, with a, a young fellow there. That's, and I started there. Well, after the year of 1985, I think I tra transferred to Carnegie in 1987 and doing a lot of AI. But the, and, and, and cybersecurity became important. Your knowledge base is stolen. Yesterday I was with the uh, very big hospital, the, and, 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 and if the DNA data is stolen, that's pretty dangerous, right? And, and of course, there are a lot of cyber attacks. So SciLab is uh, one of the U.S. research center on, on cyber security, mostly a, in the area of uh, cyber warfare. And of course, we do a lot of blockchain research there too. And cognitive research laboratories, is, 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 is uh, established in 1988, and it is the Japan's first, first AI company, which I started in 1980 as a PhD student at the Carnegie Mellon, and it's still there. And of course, I have a foundation called Crypto Assets Central Bank Found Foundation, where it, it is a supporter of, I, of ITO and NSTO, so I actually consult a number of governments outside Japan even for, for there are a few, few governments who are still interested in, in changing a new laws based in, in crypto, and I do advise the governments. I'm actually flying tonight over to one of the, of the, the projects that I advise one country there, overseas. And of course, I, I invest in a lot of uh, crypto exchanges and, and, and and, and, and actually banking institutions too. And, and of course, starting the end of this month, I'll be a, again a, a professor at the George Mason University in Washington DC, which is basically our, the American, it's because of the location, many of you know that a lot of our DOD people go there, so it's, uh, it's also a one, one windows to the US, the defense part of the US government. And I do a lot of, uh, Resilience is cyber and cognition, cyber warfare, cognitive warfare, that's another part of my research area. So go back to blockchain. I would like to give you a, a I want you to understand the very basic principle of, of, of behind the blockchain, and that has to be kept even in the future. Transparency, monotonicity, just two words, please remember this, okay? Transparency, and mon I'll explain you in, in, in slides, three, just three more slides, but I will explain there. And, and if observed, blockchain can be an infrastructure for future. In other words, if you don't observe this, blockchain is not going to be the future f for the people, but maybe governments, maybe criminals, but not for the future for the people. So please just understand these two concepts, transparency and monotony. That's all I would like to present to you today in and, and, and very simple slides. For example, transparency. When you talk about the, the virtual coins, don't we use the word crypto, like a cryptocurrency, right? Crypt asset. Crypt means encryption, right? Please understand this very basic theorem, principle. Thou shalt not encrypt, okay? You should not encrypt your coins, right? People say crypto. Assets. So it implies it is encrypted data. It is not. If it is, 
probably this is a, the MBAs in New York when all people started going ICO, they started using a crypto. Now even the Japanese government, when they, they, they changed the, the financial service law this year, it's now called crypt asset. And, 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 and I don't like it. And, and why? Because coins should never be encrypted. Coin is hashed. Hashing algorithm and encryption algorithm, mathematically speaking, is totally different. Okay, please. I would like to take a half a minute to explain to you, maybe a one minute, okay? The hashing algorithm was invented during the Cold War when American agent in Soviet Union wanted to send that the information that is okay to send, okay? Like, what's the crops in, in Ukraine? Tons, for example. Those are the public information you can see in the newspaper inside the Soviet Union, right? And they can send this info, but if you encrypt it, then they may be sending the sensitive information that the, 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 the Soviet government doesn't like, right? You know, where, where the specific missiles are. So you want to show what the content is. However, you don't want the contents to be modified. That is called the message digest functions back then. And now the young computer scientists started using the word hashing instead of message digest. So if you somebody says message digest, meaning you're computer science from 1980s so or before. If somebody says hashing, you're the computer science after the year 2000 or so. Like deep learning, if you are using a deep learning, you are after 2009, basically, right? and, 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 and if you don't use the word deep learning, then, then, then like AI network and so forth, so then you have before two, year 2000 AI guys. So the hashing and the message that is the same thing. You don't encrypt. If you encrypt, encryption is considered the hostile activity during the Cold War because you're hiding the content. You're like a spy. But you're getting the information that is okay to send outside of our Soviet Union and Eastern Bloc. However, to make sure it is not modified, so you put the message digest, and, and that I assure you, like if you, if you have a whole set of Bible, and if you uh, one word or one letter in the Bible is changed, or the, even the whole set of Shakespeare, then your message digest looks totally different. So it is the way to to detect the change very quickly. That's the message digest within the hashing. So we, in the blockchain transactions, in, in like, a, like a Nakamoto style, your transaction is very simple. The fast fact that A sends money to B, we just had a really nice demo, <laughs> right? That was so simple. I, li I like the recent developments in those apps, okay? You can just the, the exchange the QR code and you can send, right? But inside the, in, inside the app, what it is saying is there's a transaction. A sends a coin to B and the unit, like 100 coins of, of Bitcoin Cash, for example, and with, with, which is hashed and with the digital signature of the, of the sender, which also contains the, or the, 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 the public key of the receiver. So that's simple transaction. And when it's blocked together, we call it blockchain. And we block together, we hash them. We never encrypt them, okay? So you use a public key signature, but signature, public key signature is, a, of course, one of the encryption algorithm, but it's not an encryption of content. And of course, hashing, you never encrypt. So please understand this part of the thing that the, again, oops, I'm gonna go back. That you hash, not encrypt, okay? So the word that cryptocurrency is a, is mathematically speaking very wrong. It's a hash currency and not cryptocurrency, okay? So when I do a consulting work to the presidents of the government even, right, when we do a lot of policy making help, first time I ask you, did you, work, did you hear from your consultants and your minister that you wanna do a cryptocurrency or crypto? And I always say, if somebody uses the word crypt, don't trust them because the person doesn't know the mathematics. And you have to talk to the person who knows the mathematics, not the business model, when you are actually really creating a new law, for example, okay? So this is a question also with a public and private, okay? There are, if you're a banking institution, understand you wanna do a private blockchain. Very simply means your blockchain inside your firewall, for example. Understandable. But, you know, the days of quantum computing is already today, right? And within five years, it's commercial. Meaning, 
if you have a, any kind of computer, your any public key or simple encryption arguments are breakable real time. <laughs> Hashing is even breakable real time. Meaning any existing encryption algorithm doesn't work. But blockchain is okay. Why? Because we don't encrypt, right? So we don't care somebody decrypt your digital signature. What it is is, as long as it is a transparent blockchain, blockchain can be seen by anybody in the world. And of course, the send down receiver and the exchange are the three people who are checking what's going on to your own coin. And of course, anybody in the world. So if there's any change or modification or hacking, uh, it's made even using a quantum computer. We can detect the change right away because we don't encrypt. So we call it a public blockchain. So blockchain that is being public, if you want to put the power to the people, you have to be public. And, and, and of course, this is a, a also a sovereign and free. There are governments, I don't name the government, but you know some of the governments who decided to have a sovereign blockchain and meaning government own, owning the blockchain and they encrypt with the government encryption keys. Meaning they can monopolize all the data. You know, blockchain is gonna be used for anything, your, your, your documentation, legal documentation, medical documentation, DNA data, whatever. And of course, because of the security reasons, they wanna do a, a government sponsored sovereign blockchain. However, then, all the power is, is taken from the people to the government. That's what I think. So from my point of view, the blockchain has to be open and free blockchain. And, and, and of course, the only the ones who are allowed to modify should be able to, to be modified. But if there's any illegal activity, there we have the algorithms to, to, to check everything. In other words, you know, there are a few institutions around the world who do a, a, a the policing work on, 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 on blockchain. We have basically the collected, simulated, any, any, any transaction around the world. <laughs> well, our, our computers are very fast, and we are actually tracking, even in the, in the dark web, coins are already followed. Whether these things can be reported to like, like authorities like, are, are different. And on the, on the cybersecurity issues, we only to check whether there is a, like a terrorist activity and so forth and so forth. We, we follow them. Even if somebody that, that uses the encryption algorithm to, 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 to create a blockchain, we simply go through a firewall and we decrypt them. Well, well, you, know, you, you know, you have the, the sense when we are on, on, the, on the defense side of the activity, right? For example, for, for past seven years, I've been helping the Japanese self-defense forces to, to create a cyber command, which I had a discussion just yesterday before the party. And, and, and we have these capabilities already. And of course, attackers, hackers have the, the, the capability also. However, as long as the, the blockchain is free in public, whether it is being modified, we can detect it. You can detect it. And I think that should be the direction to go. Now. Another word is called monotonicity. So only you need to understand transparency, monotonicity, and then that's the end of my presentation. Monotonicity is very simple. The, in, this is a discrete mathematical word. It simply means the amount of information only increases, never decreases. It's like a, your ledger book, your accounting book. Right? If you are uh, on a paper, you do accounting, right? You just, if you make a mistake, what you do is you cross out and add a new num number. But in accounting, you're never allowed to use the erasers. You always add the new number and you never subtract the data. So in, in the computer science, from the basic the data structure, we can create a, a, such a data, monotonicity. And, 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 and so Nakamoto has a, a, a blockchain, you know, the, I, I, I think, we created, this is one company, Just System, in, in, in year 1993 or four, we created one of the world's first cryptocurrency, that was the 1990s. We did a lot of, of, of NED agreement with a California company, so when Nakamoto thing came out, people called me and said, are you Nakamoto? And I said, no, I'm not, because I wouldn't do what this, this, this model does, because the, the monotonicity in Nakamoto model is, is a pseudo monotonicity, it's not a real monotonicity. It's based on, it's a, like a business model monotonicity. You, as I said, you have a transaction and you actually hash them. 
and, and digital sign them and block them and hash them. So, so digital signature hashing, digital signature hashing, tree of data structure. So that's kind of monotonic. However, if somebody breaks the digital signature, somebody breaks the hashing, it is not the algorithmic monotonicity. So we can, we can create an entire architecture on, in terms of a discrete mathematical algorithmic model to make it a monotonicity. And that's a lot safer. Anyway, the, uh, there are purely monotonic algorithms exist. I wouldn't talk about my own algorithm, but I have my graph unification is one of the, the discrete this direct graph unification algorithm can be a, used as a monotonic data structure back in 1990 and 1991. So, so I don't, you don't need to, to see the details of mathematics, but please note that if you, you know, there, there are a few things about the problem with the kind of blockchain. For example, blockchain is very slow used to take uh, the days to send the money, right? And, and, and why? Because, it is, as I said, it's the blocks of a transaction in a tree format. So if you want to make sure that somebody, you want to send some money to somebody else, the exchange will make sure you have actual money. The, in, 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 in cryptocurrency, the, the in blockchain, your, your balance is very simple. All the receivables, all the transactions that are sent to you, that's your receivables. Minus everything you send is your balance. So if you want to check your own balance, you have to go back to the blockchain and do all the tree search and, and, and make sure that you have the balance. And that, that is very heavy. I, I was impressed with the, 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 the wallet application that we know the balance right away. Why? Because he has the data cache somewhere in, in, in the database, in the wallet or, 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 the, or the, the, the database itself. But that's not the part of blockchain. If you don't do a balance check on the actual blockchain, you have to go through the entire blockchain and, you, and, and that is very slow. So if somebody hacks the, the, your caching mechanism, you're dead. This happened. CoinCheck lost 500 million US dollars last year. And, 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 they, and of course, they, the United Nations warned that this money went to North Korea. Whether it actually went to North Korea or not, it was so easy for them to hack. Why? Because they, they didn't use the blockchain. Japan has a 15, 16 government registered companies who are uh, called exchanges and, 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 and their name was used to be a blockchain association of Japan. I was only telling them, don't call yourself blockchain association of Japan because you never use the blockchain. What it did is, there are one, the, what we call a, a, a client or the wallet mode. So one wallet on the blockchain containing one million people on the database. So within the database, they did the transactions and, 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 and with one wallet. So CoinCheck only had one wallet and with uh, 300,000 clients. And, and hacker only need, need to hack one wallet and they, they, they got all the money because one of the reasons is because blockchain is slow. If 300,000 clients of them had their own wallet, then, then they could not do businesses in real time. So that is a, a, a mathematical problem of speed of, of the blockchain. And, and of course, there is a solution to that, right? Except that I need to, to explain the mathematics to the to, to, to younger generation. That's, and, 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 but now, I've been saying this forever until CoinCheck lost the money and, 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 and Zyf lost another 50 million. Now people are starting to listen to, to me and to us. Okay. So this is the last slide, I think. First of all, transparency, monotonicity, just two principles, right? And, and those are, are broken by many people. Many corporations, the banking institutions, large company, they try to do a blockchain inside the firewall. They think it's safer. In, 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 in the US, in Japanese, the, the, at least in a, in a cyber warfare level, we have the jargon, zero trust, okay? This is the department, US Department of Defense Policy of, of, of what we call zero trust, meaning we assume every firewall, every encryption algorithm is, is, is broken. So what happens after? We call it resilience. So the current, current in, in at least in the cyber warfare level, we don't trust the firewall anymore. 
Okay, we assume that it's being, being broken. It's, it, it happens with the quantum computing with the blockchain very soon, within a few years. Okay, so as long as we keep the transparency, even if the firewall is broken and if the, somebody changes the, 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 the transaction, we can re very quickly moni monitor the changes. And of course, as long as we keep the monotonicity, the original data is always maintained somewhere, somewhere in the world distributed and you can always go back to the original. Okay, so the monotonicity is the key, especially in the days of quantum computing. And of course, this is a equal access, equal opportunity. That's, I think, is what we are talking about. And, and no cheating, no stealing, no manipulations, as long as it's transparent. We can detect it right away, right? And, and, and of course, as I said, resilience in, in, the, in the cyber, the world is no longer a, a, a how to protect. How, now we are, uh, it's the days of how, how can we be resilient after we, the, our system are hacked, how quickly we can recover from, from the damage, that's the resilience. And same in, 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 in blockchain crypto areas. The resilience in blockchain is, is going to be needed. And current basic mathematics based on Nakamoto's paper is not resilient enough. So we have many modifications or the proposal that we've been doing since 1990s even. And of course, these are resilient, transparent, monotonicity data structure or mathematical algorithms can be a basic infrastructure, any big data. Actually, it can be a computer, you know, in a computer science, you have a memory, RAM, hard disk memory. It's just the bits of, of like 8 bits, 16 bits, 30 bits, 64. It's just a, the, 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 the bit of a bits. That's dangerous. This vector of bits has to be monotonic data structure. So it's, it's, speed is a problem. Now, as our, our past keynote speaker said, the, the CPU power is 100,000 100, times to a million times faster than what it used to be. So with the current sp speed of the machines, instead of just having a bit vector on, on the hardware, on, 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 on the memory and the hard disk, the basic data structure can be a mathematical monotonic data structure. Or, of course, somebody can hack it, but still all the trace of, of the changes will, will remain. So it can be, a, I will, a probably in the future, because I was, yesterday I was talking with, as I said, is uh, the, the Japan's, uh, the large, the, the medical institution, and trying to persuade the government till next year mandates the cybersecurity in, in hospitals. And, and one of the things are, are data just stored in hard disks and, and cloud. And, and original data itself, at the data, not the file being encrypted, okay? So, so last mark is, in, when you talk about encryption, you have a large bits of data, or textbook, or big data, an entire file being encrypted, okay? Like a blockchain. And the blockchain is actually not encrypted, it's a hash, but some, some, in, in, in a firewall and, and private chains, they, they, they encrypt the same thing. That is the wrong way to go. Each piece of, of data, each 16 bits of data on memory and hard disk has to be a, 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 a basically a, a, a more of, of a, a monotonic data structure. Mathematically, and of course I've worked with uh, uh, the physics, uh, material engineering, and theoretical physics people, we have a experimental the data that on, on, on the hardware level, on, 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 we can do a, a, a monotonic data structure. And, 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 and that's one direction to go. And, and I think I'll stop here and, and, and leave time for our speakers. But uh, two messages, monotonicity, transparency, monotonicity. Please remember this, if somebody in FinTech come to you, just ask how are your data structure transparent and how your data structure monotonic? Is it encrypted? And if somebody says the, the world uses cryptocurrency, please tell them, oh, you're encrypting the currency. That is pretty dangerous. Because if somebody hacks you, then you cannot detect the changes, right? If you're in the firewall, if somebody hacks you or in from the inside, if somebody corrupts you, steal the data from outside, we don't see what's going on, right? That's very dangerous. And, and, and people like private blockchains, especially in the financial institutions, we should say no to that. I think 
Otherwise, we lose the power of people. The power of people goes to banking institutions and major corporations and not the people. So public, open, transparent, and monotonic. And that's, that's the message I would like to convey to you. Thank you.